Today, I'm gonna to show you how you can get into Linux the most easy way. This is actually how I got into Linux. So I'm just gonna show you a very easy way to get into Linux, okay? So number one, okay, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna download Linux Mint on a virtual machine. And it's pretty simple. This is literally how I did it. You go to the Linux Mint website, you go to download, and you have three options. Oh, oh, it's already so hard. No, just choose whichever one, okay? Now I downloaded Cinnamon, on a virtual machine, but it really doesn't matter. It's just how it looks. So in this instance, I'm actually gonna download the XFC edition because it's just light and simple. Do note that on a virtual machine, Linux is not gonna run that well. It's gonna be quite a bit slower, but um, on when you install Linux on your bare metal or you're just looking at it through a live USB, it'll be much quicker. But a virtual machine, unless you've got an insane computer, um, it might not run well. So keep that in mind. But yeah, so I'm just going to download the XFC edition. And um, there's quite a few ways to download it. The easiest the easiest way to download it is through a torrent. I'll say that. Um, you can download it for a mirror. This is actually how I downloaded it when I uh, first got into it. There's a problem though, is you need another tool to make sure the integrity and the authenticity is correct. Now, you don't have to do this. You don't have to verify it. If you don't, it is... It's not likely, you know, you probably don't have to because it's a virtual machine. Uh, so you'll probably be fine. But if you were to download and put anything on your bare metal, always verify it that it's actually from the developers and stuff because their website could get hacked, it could get filled with, um, you know, fake or uh, virus infested ISOs. Downloading it for a torrent, I believe, does this automatically. So that's how I did it here. I downloaded it automatically, uh, checks the files and all that. So just the easiest way you know torrent is also faster and you can help out people so you know usually the downloads are quite a bit faster but you also have these it's up to you just be aware after that we're going to use a program called VirtualBox, and all it is is a program to basically create a mini computer inside your computer run another operating system on top of your operating system um, and it's kind of in its own little sandbox its own play area you only assign it what you want to and it's really as simple as that. So what we're going to do is we're going to click new. We're going to type in of Linux Mint. Um, you know, this is just in my... Oh. So I'm gonna, <clears throat> so I'm just gonna type in Linux Mint, and then from there we're gonna select the ISO, which is right here. So it's Linux Mint, and it detects that it's Ubuntu and you know whatever, because um, Linux Mint is built off Ubuntu. So yeah, that's how it works. All you do is you click next, um, unattended guest. Damn, I don't even know what this is. Uh, So I typed in Linux Mint, um, you point it to a folder where you want the VM to be installed. You put, you know, you select where you downloaded it, you select the ISO, so we've got Linux Mint ISO here. And then from there, you just want to click, so you can have this like, I literally just learned this unattended guest OS. I'm going to be honest, I have no idea what this is. I guess for Microsoft Windows guests, it's possible to provide a product key. We're not trying to do that, we're just going to say skip. And then from there, we're just going to allocate how much we want to uh, give the virtual machine. So right now this is two gigs of uh, RAM, but you know what, we'll give it, I've got 16, so we'll give it a couple, we'll give it like six, because I'm also recording, why not? Um, actually, let me check, do I have the, do I have the funds? Uh, yeah, yeah, okay, I'm not using too much. So I got, I got six, I'll give it six, I'll give it like 
two CPU cores. And um, we'll go next. We want to create a virtual disk. Personally, I like to use a. Um, I remember there was one that like it kind of allocates itself or something. Because with this, if you run out of space, you're kind of dead. Or well, it's not like you're dead, but it's just really annoying to do it. Um, I'm going to be honest, I actually don't know what to do. Alright, after some thinking, I'm just going to give it like... You want to give it more than you think, so I'm not actually going to give it 100 gigs. Like, I'm not going to download anything crazy on it, but I'll just give it 100 gigs. Um, yeah, and um, all we do is click finish. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to click new, we're going to type in Linux Mint, from there. Okay, so what we're going to do, I was going to click new, and then from there, you can set it up. Okay, so what we're going to do through Virtual Machine is we're going to type, we're going to click on new, it'll bring up this screen, we're going to type in Linux Mint, technically you can call it whatever you want, but I'm just going to call it that. We're going to point to where we want the folder to be. We're going to click on the, we're going to select the ISO, so the ISO is Linux Mint here, and I have some of my downloads. And then from there, you want to make sure you skip unattended installation. This is just for like Windows or something like that, I'm going to be honest, I don't really know that much, but I believe that that's what it is. From here, we're just going to enable, we're going to give it a couple gigs, so I'm just going to give it 6 gigs, but only give it what you can, so I've got 16 gigs. 6 gigs is fine, I can do that. Um, I'm going to give it 2 CPUs, again, depends on your computer, that's why having a, a, a better, more powerful computer is always better. For virtual machines, you have more uh, of your machine that you can allocate to the virtual machine to run well. And then from there, we're going to select, you know, create a virtual disk, I'm just going to give it like 80 gigs 80 gigs sounds fine and then from there you're done you click finish and boom you have your virtual machine next we're going to oh, okay so we're just going to start it and i just put it oh okay i don't know what i just did okay so <laughs> okay so we've got the virtual machine going um we'll add grub so we're just going to do you, know, you can use your keyboard. We're just going to select the first one. And I don't know why it keeps doing that. It's very strange. And now we've got Linux Mint loading up. And, and that's kind of it. Um, you're basically. Okay, there. You basically just installed Linux, technically. Uh, I mean, this is a live USB, so in the virtual machine. So technically, it's nothing's uh, properly installed, but you know, you can do some very basic things like. Firefox, boom. And this is literally Linux. Um, specifically the the Mint distro. And, um, you know, you can use Vim. No, you can't. Okay, you can use uh, Nano. Nano. Whoa, you know. Alright, so from here, you're basically inside of Linux. This is Linux. And um, this is how I kind of got started. I kind of just like messed around saw what there was to like offer and like what it's kind of like i guess and um yeah now this is only a live you know it says a live session user so you're only in a live like this this is called a live cd environment so if you want to properly install linux you have to click on the install linux mint um little program there <laughs> like i don't know what it's called 
and you just press continue yeah okay English yep and uh, you know it might take a little bit store multimedia codex yeah sure why not and then from here you're just you're installing it and um, erase and just install yeah you know because this is a virtual disk you can do that so just install now um, and it'll do it'll do all the partitioning it'll do everything for you you don't have to do anything now this is a very like basic but well, this is actually how most people I think install Linux or most people experience Linux is they just download some a distro that kind of does everything for them and that's fine you shouldn't be feel belittled because oh I'm not doing it the proper way or whatever it's up to you personally I just kind of messed around with this and I just got bored um, I got bored and uh, so I got bored pretty quickly and maybe you will maybe you won't maybe you'll be like oh you know what I actually kind of like how it is interested from there what you can do is you can figure out how to um, create a partition on your disk let's say you're using Windows create a partition on one of your disk and then on that partition install Linux that's literally what I've done I've got three hard drives I've got a SSD I've got a hard drive and then I have another SSD and on my third S or my second SSD, I kind of split into two, one having a lot of just Windows programs, and then on the other partition. And my first, my main SSD is where I have Windows installed, so it's on a separate disk. And then on my third one, I allocated like half of the drive to install Linux, Arch Linux specifically. And yeah, that's kind of how I did everything, and um, got interested, and it worked out for me because, um, yeah. <laughs> but again, it's up to you. You can do that where you can partition it just like I did and then install, let's say, Arch Linux or Linux Mint or something else. It, it's whatever you want, to be honest. Um, or you can keep playing around in virtual machines, um, which go ahead. If you're, in, if you're interested in downloading a distro, maybe as a beginner, only download it as a virtual machine before you install it actually on your bare metal because you don't want to mess around and maybe potentially break something, especially if you're doing something more complex like Arch Linux, but nowadays everything's made a lot more easier. I actually make a video on this how to install Arch Linux the easiest way. There's no need to install it in the try hard way anymore. You can just install it very simply, no headaches. So yeah, that's about it. Um, honestly, if you really want to get into Linux, interest, curiosity. Curiosity is what fuels your interest and your knowledge. Get curious about things, how do things work, figure out and you'll learn. Really, that's it. Um, yeah, I hope this video has helped you. If it did, please like, subscribe, helps me out a lot. And yeah, see ya.